say, um, for me anyways. But I want to welcome you to Maranatha if you're new or if you're a visitor. The, the second cool part of the Sunday is uh, I hope you picked up a bulletin. It has a lot of information that you need to know about. But if you're a visitor, um, this has a little tear-off, and this is my favorite part. Um, please fill that out so and put it in the little box in the back. That way uh, we can make contact with you and talk to you about your visit. Uh, if you have a prayer request, on the back side it, it has a little space for you to write some prayer requests. Please fill that out. That gives the leadership and some members of the church an opportunity to pray for you and with you. Some of the upcoming announcements. Um, this Wednesday, actually tonight there is no youth group. Uh, this Wednesday, VBS, hold on. VBS will be after the business meeting. We have a business meeting at 6.30 followed, followed by VBS planning and decorating and all that other cool stuff. So if you're involved with VBS, if you don't know what you're doing for VBS, or if you just want to help and you haven't been approached yet, uh, we're having a business meeting this Wednesday at 6.30. We will do VBS stuff directly afterwards. Um, that said, VBS is July 25th through the 29th, so uh, I hope you are signed up for somewhere to work. Um, downstairs, there are registration forms. If you know kids in your neighborhood, if you have grandkids, if you have kids of your own, uh, please snatch a few of these and, and, and invite them to VBS. It is a fun time. It is a great time. Uh, also, uh, in there, some more VBS needs. Uh, nursery volunteers, if you, if you like hanging out with kids downstairs, um, please sign up, see Judith. Um, she kind of sets that rotation. Um, the last thing is for the month of June, what are we doing? Is it toys? July is clothing. Clothing. Um, that is right up your alley. So... Uh, instead of waiting until December to do the uh, shoe boxes for Operation Christmas Child, uh, we're trying to collect a bunch of stuff throughout the year, and in fact, they have it designed where you collect stuff throughout the year. So the month of July is clothing, so if you're out and about um, and you want to pick up a few extra clothes items for kids, uh, you can put them in that back room or you can see uh, Cindy, and she will get them taken care of. Um, yes, ma'am. I'm taking sign up for a deal for the vacation Bible school. We're working, and vacation Bible school is leaving in those. How many of your families will be here to keep that money? Okay. Is there any other VBS items? I don't think so. I don't okay. Uh, the, the last thing, um, before we jump up and welcome everybody. Uh, the fireworks stand was great and cool, uh, but there's a bunch of stuff downstairs that isn't the church's. Um, so if you took stuff to the fireworks tent and you left it, please go downstairs and pick it up. It's in the kitchen. It's kind of laid out there. Um, we need to get that squared away for VBS. With that said, so everybody needs to stand up and uh, find four or five people and tell them you're glad they're here. Glad you're here, Russ. Glad to, Mr. Phelps.
Go ahead and be seated. This is the cool part of our service where we open it up to you guys to share praises. Um, It's good for the body to hear that. It's good for other believers to hear what's going on in your life, what God is doing in your life. So uh, give me an opportunity so you can talk into the mic because, again, if I'm talking, they pick it up back there, but then it's just wah, 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 you know. Um, I know Facebook isn't always great, but there was a thing on there about praying for a country. This is before whatever just happened, but uh, and so I set my alarm for 8:01 because that's what it says to do it, and it has really helped because not only have I been praying for the nation, but I've prayed for other things. It's I've always been a prayer person, but it's like it's increased it twofold because it makes me think about it more. Amen. This is just a prayer request for my aunt. She said she needs... I don't like this microphone. Um, she ne- she asked me to pray for her to get a job in uh, Topeka Housing Authority. And I don't know when it's, she's supposed to uh, get an interview or what, but I figured I'd let it out to the church. So. All right. I came down last weekend with something known as Bell's Palsy, and I'm trying to recover, but it's taking a while, so pray for me. Um, But I'm just grateful to God that I didn't have a stroke, which is what Bill and I both thought that it was, so. Amen. I'm going to cut through. Well, last week we had our uh, fireworks stand, and you know, we looked at it, we thought, oh, that's a lot of work. But you know what? What we set out to accomplish, we accomplished. Amen. We built a, a relationship within the church. We reached out to the community, and we're taking the, the offering from that, and it's going to be used to bless people in, uh, in our benevolent fund. And I want to just thank Randy. Randy, you did a good job. Thank you. We've been trying to sell a house for over a year and went to closing four times. Well, it finally stuck. July 5th, that sucker was sold. (laughs) And we give it all to God because we just turned it loose. Amen. I got scholarship from Washburn for my JD program. It reduced my tuition to the in-state rate. So that will save me a lot of money. All right. So with that, uh, she signed up for the one-year program, and she was supposed to only be here for about a year. Um, She's now going to stay another two years to get her Juris Doctorate. So we're going to have her around for two more years. Any other praises? Thank you. Um, A few days ago, uh, my Aunt Penny passed away, so she's home with the Lord. And uh, I guess my main praise is even growing up my family always fought they never there was nine brothers and sisters all my aunts never was under one roof never happened well a couple days ago they had their funeral and they were kind of all in one room (laughs) 
blew my mind. I'm clear on the other side of the country, but uh, so it, it kind of she was the oldest, so it brought my whole family together, and that's something that's never happened. Amen. And uh, it brought them all together emotionally and physically, and uh, man, that's the an answer to a lifelong prayer. Amen. So that's literally the biggest praise I think I've ever had in my life. So. Amen. Getting my exercise for the day. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. And I just want to say that I, I praise God for for my life that He has given me again. Um, Nineteen years ago, I would have not seen um, my first grandchild being. I don't know when it's supposed to be today, but. Sometime this week, uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter, is going to have my first grandchild. And 19 years ago, um, I was laying on my deathbed in a coma. But now, I praise God that He has, He has the grace and the love for for doing what He's done in my life. And and um, I just thank God for. For his son Jesus Christ, for what he did for us, and just leading me to places where I need to be, and how I need to worship him, and I just thank God for that. Amen. Huh? <laughs> Get my steps in for the day. So Caden had surgery two and a half weeks ago, and we went back to the doctor on Tuesday for a follow-up, and the tumor was benign. They think they got it all. They took a lot of bone with it, but he uh, was trying to climb trees four days out of the hospital, and the doctor's very impressed with how fast he's healing. So, oh, Did you want to show him? This is his scar. <laughs> Only in church will that happen. <laughs> All right. Any other praises? Okay. It's <laughs> true. Yep. The birds are good. Um, the dog has not eaten them yet. He still wants to. But what I really wanted to say is, because I found this church, first I found Paula, and then I found this church, and then I joined this church, we have a mutual friend who wants to come to this church. How about them apples? Amen. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this time that we can share praises, that we can voice what you're doing in our life and encourage one another. God, I pray that you be with us. I pray that you be with Doyle and the worship team as they lead us into your throne room. God, I just ask that you would move in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Psalms 100, shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and delight. Come before his presence with joyful singing. Know and fully recognize with gratitude that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us, not we ourselves, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with a song of thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful to him, bless and praise his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy and loving kindness are everlasting. His faithfulness endures to all generations. Amen. God is good. Let's stand and continue to worship. I will give you all my worship. I will give you all. See you. 
Amen. It is good to sing the praises of our God. Last week, we were at the firework tent, and we had the privilege of worshiping with another congregation, and that was good. It's good to worship with God's people, but I'll, I'm just going to be honest with you, it's good to be home. It's good to be here. It's good to be amongst you guys and to just worship together. The Father inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. Let's just worship him today. Here I am to bow down. 
you had to go through, to be beaten, to be scorned, to be mocked, to have a crown of thorns pushed onto your skull to the point where blood just ran down your face, knowing all of that, God, you chose to stand, not in your own strength, but in your heavenly Father's strength. God, I pray for that spiritual backbone to be able to stand, God, in these days that are so scary, so trying. God, I pray for your ability and your faith to stand when you've called me to speak to my co-workers, to my neighbors, to my family members. God, I pray that you'll give me the fortitude to stand 
and to open my mouth to trust that the Holy Spirit speaks through me. God, I pray as T-Max shared the last time he was here for those divine appointments, God. I pray for those divine appointments for every one of us here that know you. God, I pray for that divine appointment for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Divine appointments, God, to further your kingdom. Because it's not about us, it's all about you. Just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Children, you can go ahead and be dismissed. Sweet. Thank you. Felt like I was squinting at him like this. It was really, really bright up here. You probably can't tell, but it was. It's, I'm, I'm dealing with it. Before we dive right in, um, I want to say thank you, because you guys rocked the fireworks stand. Uh, you showed up in force. You showed up in numbers. You came to work uh, in the rain, um, late at night, but do what? When it was wet? When it was windy, uh, when there was nobody selling fireworks, we had a lot of people out there. And the cool part about it was uh, we didn't so much congregate in the doorway. We congregated in the back door, which was perfect because nobody could come in or out that way. So we got to give them bags right off the front. We were selling fireworks to them. We were giving them gospel tracts. We were talking to them about Jesus. Uh, but you guys rocked the fireworks stand. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you that is a testament to you, to the church, to Maranatha. Um, and I just appreciate it because, wow, you guys showed up. Now, um, you should also maybe be nervous because now I know that about you. Um, and so next time when we do something like that, because maybe the fireworks stand has run its course and staying out all night, for a week is kind of old. Uh, but next time we do something big like that, I'll expect that same stuff. So I appreciate that. We're going to dive right in. Let's pray first. Father God, we just, we thank you for this church. We thank you for the people in it. God, we thank you for sending your son to die on a cross and save us where we're at. I pray that you would be with us right now. I pray that you would speak through me directly to our hearts they wouldn't be my thoughts or words, but that they'd be yours. God, I pray that you would be with this body of believers, Lord, as they go out today, that you would guard their hearts, that you would bless them in their endeavors, God. I pray that you would uh, just be with them as they go out into this broken world, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so the title of this message is, is we'll title it, Sending Out. Um, and it's unique that we're preparing to leave the country when we have a country in so much turmoil. And we're going to kind of talk a little bit about uh, that. But I'll say this message has kind of been building for maybe a year, year and a half. Um, and so uh, about a year ago, uh, we were reading a book called Radical. Um, and we started to talk about it. Some group of guys and I would meet together and we would talk about it. Um, and also about a year ago, I kind of started to get an itch that maybe we needed to do a mission trip. And so I kind of got to thinking. I got to talking with some people. I know somebody who used to go to Haiti regularly. Um, I said, I kind of thought, oh, okay. Last year, right around the fireworks tent, I started talking to people. Hey, what do you think about this? Would this be a cool trip to go to? Um, do we think we'd have a lot of people? Um, and so that's kind of how this trip was started. Uh, if you're not familiar, uh, tomorrow we're leaving for Kansas City. Uh, and then Tuesday morning, 
At 6.15, our flight departs to Miami. We'll eat lunch in Miami, and then we'll land in the Dominican Republic Tuesday at about 2.30 their time, I think, which would be 1.30 here, because it's only an hour difference. Uh, so we're technically two days away from stepping foot in another country. Uh, but last year we started to kind of come up with this plan. I started to talk with a guy by the name of Steve Hastings. Um, and he kind of laid out the plan. I called him and I said, hey, Steve, I want to go to Haiti. And he said, well, why Haiti? And I said, I don't know. That's just where you go. And he said, well, not really. I said, okay, where will you take us? And he said, if you want to work with the Haitians and if you want to go down there, I go to the Dominican Republic because Haiti is kind of volatile at this moment. And I said, okay, that'll be easier to sell to parents. I'm not taking your kid to a dangerous place. I like it. So we started to talk a little bit of details. He said, hey, this is what you need to do. I said, okay. He said, I'll send you some of this stuff. I said, okay. He said, you'll stay at this place. Um, your in-country costs will be about $650. I said, that's perfect. He goes, I always gain weight when I go there because the food is so good. I said, that is right up my alley. Uh, so then we started to plan. And in about September, we had a meeting. Um, because this is my first time I've taken, uh, I've led a team outside the country. I kind of wanted it to be a small group that I knew and was comfortable with. So I kind of picked and prayed about some youth, and I said, hey guys, let's get together and talk about this. If you're interested in going on this trip, you need to have a parent present. And I had a pretty good turnout. Then I said, hey, this is what the trip is going to be. It is going to be difficult. It is going to be tough. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do. This is a, we may do this, 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 and this. We may do some street ministry. We may... Uh, pray with people, we may do door-to-door, -door. we may do some backyard Bible club, we may do some VBS, we may just stand on a street and talk with people about Christ. So out of that, I had four youth uh, sign up and say, yeah, I think that'll work. And so it was going to be Randy and I and four youth, um, and we started to plan things, and we started to purchase some things, um, and wouldn't you know, uh, right around... I think it was January uh, that the plane or air, the airline changed our tickets. And if you've ever flown, they changed our tickets and then they send you an email that's saying, oh, by the way, we've changed your tickets. The problem, though, is my ticket was supposed to land in Miami at 6 p.m. But I was supposed to leave Miami at 5 p.m. Now, I'm no rocket scientist, but that doesn't work if you leave at 5, and if you land at 6. Um, and I even asked the, the airline, I said, does it have anything to do with the time change? Or I was really kind of worried and, and starting to get stressed out. And so then right around January um, or February, I decide, okay, we're going to spend the night in Miami. Um, and that's an added expense. That's a hotel, that's two hotel rooms down in Miami. Um, I've never, well, I've stayed in Miami, so I, I can't remember how expensive they were, but I got them for fairly cheap, but that was an added expense that I hadn't accounted for. But, and I've told you this story, a few months before that, uh, one of my old bosses down in Pittsburgh, Kansas, said, hey, Jeremy, uh, are you full? Do you need money? And I said, actually, Dave, we're, we're full. We don't need any more money. We're fully funded. He said, okay. Two months later, I said, hey, Dave, I need about $200 if you're willing to give any part of that. Dave said, I'll give $250. How about that? I said, that is excellent and amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, so that kind of came up. Uh, then about 45 days out, two of our kids called me and said, Hey, Jeremy, I don't think we're going to go. <gasps> okay. How does that work? They said, well, we've been praying about it. I said, okay. Um, they said, we're not going to go. We don't feel God's calling us to go. So we had, a, we had a discussion and we talked about it. I said, okay. Um, so our team of six went down to four. And I'm kind of going, oh my goodness, did we mess this up? Should we not be going? I start to ask myself some of those questions and I start to think, Oh my, this is way too many hiccups uh, for one trip. 
But then I remember a question I was asked, and the question is this. Do you have a heart for the nations? Do you have a heart for the nations? And it's easy to sit here and talk about it, and that's what we're going to kind of dive into. But do you have a heart for the nations? You see, when I was at Pitt State, uh, CrossQuest, the, the Baptist Student Union down there, would go to Kazakhstan every year. Um, and Mike Trent would take a group of college kids every summer, and they would go to Kazakhstan, and they would do an English camp at the university. And they would sit down, and they would talk English to uh, the natives over there. And they would sit down and just work on their English. Um, and their thought process was that would give them an opportunity to share the gospel of Christ on a public university over in Kazakhstan. How cool is that? And so Mike would ask me, Jeremy, do you have a heart for the nations? And I'm like, Mike, look, I'm not a world traveler. I don't like to travel very much. That's just outside of my comfort zone. I think God has called me here in the States. And so summer after summer, I would have to explain to Mike, Mike, I don't think, you know, yeah, I have a heart for the nations, but I think there's issues I can deal with here. We can, we can, we can talk with people here about Christ. We can share the gospel here. And so fast forward to last year, and we're reading this book, and it hit me that I didn't have a heart for the nations. It hit me, and, and we're going to read an, expert, an excerpt from the book, but it hit me that as I was in ministry and as I was beginning to pray that God would give me his heart, I didn't have a heart for the nations. And in fact, I probably didn't even want one because of what that entailed. So the excerpt uh, is from David Platt. He is the president of the North American Mission Board. Is that right, Jay? Used to be? Ish? At one, used to be. It's not NAM anymore, though, is it? It still is? Okay. Uh, he wrote a book called Radical, and I'm going to read you a few paragraphs of it. Maybe the most common response that arises among Christians regarding the global purpose of God is what about the needs here? Why do we have to be involved in other nations when there are so many needs in our nations? In our nation. Among Christians in Birmingham, where I pastor, I often hear the statement phrased something like this. I don't need to go to all the nations because God has given me a heart for the United States. Others might say, God has given me a heart for Birmingham. These statements sound spiritual, but when we probe deeper, they seem more like smoke screens. They are smoke screens because most of us really are not very concerned about the needs right around us. Most Christians rarely share the gospel, and most Christian schedules are not heavily weighted to feeding the hungry, helping the sick, and strengthening the church in the neediest places in our country. But even if we were doing these things, we would still be overlooking the foundational biblical truth when we say our hearts are for the United States. As we have seen all over Scripture, God's heart is for the world. So when we say we have a heart for the United States, we are admitting that we have a meager 5% of God's heart. And we are proud of it. When we say that we have a heart for the city we live in, we confess that we have less than 1% of God's heart. Certainly there are great needs here, but, most, but we must insist on dividing the Great Commission into an either-or proposition. Who told us we had to choose to have a heart for the United States or a heart for the world? Based on the Scripture purpose of God we've seen in Scripture, shouldn't every Christian's heart be ultimately consumed with how we can make God's glory known in all the world. It's 6,783,421,727 and counting. As I write this chapter, this is the population of the world. According to the most liberal estimates, approximately one-third of the world is Christian. These estimates include all who identify themselves as Christian whether religiously, socially, or politically. 
Likely not all of them are actually followers of Christ. But it, even if we assume they are, that still leaves 4.5 billion people who are, if the gospel is true at this moment, are separated from God in their sin, and assuming nothing changes, will spend eternity in hell. 4.5 billion. And most of them live outside the United States. So when I read that, Probably like most of you, I thought, Jeremy, I've got a heart for the nations, but God has called me here, and I'm fine with that, and God's given me a heart for the United States. And in fact, God's given me a heart for Topeka, or God's given me a heart for Pittsburgh, or God's given me a heart for Kansas. And when I read that, I was crushed. You see, as a youth pastor, or pastor, or somebody in ministry, to say, I only have 5% of God's heart, Wow. To say that God has given me a heart for the United States and not the world, that I should be more concerned with what's going on in my own country and could care less what's going on out there, 5% of God's heart. I could care less about those other 4.5 billion people who most of them don't even live in the United States. That crushed me. That, I was in awe. That really bothered me. So I began to pray, God, this doesn't make sense. I'm not a traveler. I don't like to travel. I'm a homebody. But God, I feel you maybe calling me to do something like this. I feel maybe you calling me to share what God's given me outside the United States. And so he began to do this mission trip. He began to unfold this mission trip. He began to kind of lay out the plans. I can tell you when we land Tuesday, we're going to have kind of a debrief, an orientation to what's going on in country. We're going to spend a lot of time in prayer. Then Wednesday morning when we wake up, we're going to hit the ground running. We're going to do a VBS for three or four days. We're going to do street church in the evenings. Um, one of the coolest parts that I'll probably rub in later, we're going to have church on the beach. As Doyle would put it, we're going to suffer for Jesus on the beach. The cool part about it all is over in that suitcase is 1,242 Gospel of John tracks. So four people from a small church in Topeka, Kansas are going to take over 1,200 Gospel tracks not for us to hand out. The idea is we can go down there, give them to the minis the, minis the, 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 yep. the missionary, or the M, the missionary, and say, hand these out as you wish, when you want to. We want to leave you well prepared. Today we're actually going to go buy um, a bunch of coloring books, crowns, frisbees for the VBS we're doing. Um, I've got about... 30 DVDs of the Billy Graham Heaven DVD downstairs in Spanish that we're going to leave down there with them. So four people from Little Topeka, Kansas, on a national level, are going to have a big impact in a small country. All because we're willing to have a, a heart for the nations. All because we're willing to step outside of our comfort zone, put down our... Uh, ideas of what's going on and have a heart for the nations and not the world. See, God has a heart for the nations. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. God has a heart for the nations. God had called His disciples and called His followers to start out in Jerusalem, which was their capital city, then kind of go to their country or state, then go to their neighboring country or state that they didn't even get along with. 
So I kind of equate it to, let's start with Topeka, let's go to Kansas, and then, o or not Oklahoma, because we like Oklahoma. <laughs> and that's God's favorite country, Oklahoma. <laughs> Just so we're all aware. Just so we're all aware. Go to Missouri and share Christ with people from Missouri. Hopefully nobody's from Missouri. Uh, we love you anyways. We love you anyways. But, but go share with Nebraska or Colorado or Oklahoma. Go share with surrounding communities. Then it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop with just your surrounding communities. It says go to the remotest part of the earth. We're going to go to Porta Plata. We're going to land in Porta Plata, Dominican Republic. Then we're going to stay in Susa, Dominican Republic. I don't even know what the mailing address is, but we're going to stay in a little bitty community. And then we're going to drive to Munoz, which is another little bitty community, and that's where we're going to do some VBS stuff, and that's where we're going to do some night church stuff, and that's where they're building a school, and, and we're just going to love on those people, and we're going to give them 1,200 gospel tracts that they can hand out to. So we're saying, we're literally saying that 1,242 people who don't know Christ will get a gospel track in their hand, in their language, all from a little bitty church in Topeka, Kansas. I don't know how many miles away. Two plane rides. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Let me tell you. These planes are going to give me a heart attack. All because we're willing to have a heart for the nations. All because we're willing to take on God's heart and get rid of our own. So I've kind of shared, but in two days we're going to step foot on another country. Um, I've been, I've been to Canada. That was really weird. Um, they didn't like us up there. We did some prayer walking, um, and I actually went to George Bojackley's birthday party and going away party, and he actually was coming down here to KNCSB uh, to work for the state convention. So it's a real, real small world. And then he was actually one of my professors in seminary. Oh my. A little short guy, love him to death, and he loves Jesus. Uh, so I've been to Canada, and then I went to Mexico uh, when I was in high school. And when I say Mexico, I don't mean like just across the border. We went like six hours south of the border, um, and you're in Mexico there. Like we were told not to leave the little compound we were in because there's mountain lions, and we could see a volcano in the distance, I think. And I was like, whoa, okay, I'm going to stay right here. Um, and you had to take bumpy roads everywhere. It was so cool. I loved it. Uh, we got snow cones while we were down there. Uh, so I'm, I was okay going to... I was okay. Well, they were called raspas. Um, and Well, that's how we did it. So um, I'll explain Mexico. I'll explain. So we would wake up in the morning, pile into a van, go to town to Aldama, we would back up. I don't know where we backed up to, but they would give us a block of ice. Maybe it was ice company. We'd put it in a cooler, um, and some wiser people in here may remember, like, the block of ice. Um, I'd never seen a block of ice that big, so it was kind of cool. Until they said, hey, we're going to shave this and give it to people. I'm like, okay, where's the machine? Right? <laughs> no, the little hand shaver, like, that big. Um, and so we would pull up to a village, and it was an eye-opening for a, a kid from Junction City, Kansas, and we would walk around and say, hey, we're going to have church under this tree, we're going to have church under this tree, and we would tell them we're going to have church and raspas. That's the only thing I can remember. Um, and so at this tree, ten minutes later, there would be a gathering of people, and we would have to give a silent skit because we didn't know Spanish and they didn't know English, so it was kind of a lot of this. <laughs> Nod and smile. It's the universal language. Smiling is so universal. And so uh, we would give a silent skit, and we would actually go behind the van and pray, and our interpreter would go out and give the gospel message and pray with people. And then our job was to break open the snow cones, and we would shave them, shave the ice, put it in a cup, and put some syrup on it, and give it to the kids. And then we'd get to play soccer with them or, or play frisbee with them or, or whatever. So I'm comfortable going to Mexico or Canada. 
Um, and I was comfortable being a team member. I think I'm scared to death to take a team uh, where I've never been. I don't know. Um, we're meeting Steve in Miami. Um, he's going to help us get through customs, and he's actually going to stay with us the entire week. Um, I, I don't know anything other than that. Um, I've flown before. I have no problem flying. I don't like it as much. I just don't like the whole travel aspect. I'm not a big world traveler. I'm a homebody. Uh, yeah. Just so we're all clear, Jeremy's a homebody. Um, I don't, I'm nervous. Um, I've talked with Lexi. She's excited. Dawson's excited. Randy's excited. And I'm like the nervous, scared one. Okay. We're going to go do this. Um, it hit me the other day. I was talking with my mom. We're going to get on a plane, and we're going to go do this. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 10. And while you're flipping there, I'm willing to bet that the way I feel right now is probably the way the disciples felt. Um, when they're getting ready to be sent out out of Matthew chapter 10. 1 through 11 say, Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these, the first Simon who is called Peter, Andrew, his brother, and James, the son of Zebedee, and, Z and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alph Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, Judas, the Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out after instructing them, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter any city of the Samaritans but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you received, freely you give. Do not acquire gold or silver or copper for your money belts or a bag for your journey or, two, or even two coats or sandals or a staff for the worker is worthy of his support. Jesus is listing his instructions. Jesus is saying, hey, I've got these 12 guys. These are those 12 guys. This is what they're going to do. Remember, at this point in time, the message was just intended for the Jews in Jerusalem and in Judea at this point. It hadn't yet broken worldwide yet. And so their focus is Judea. Their focus is their brother Jews. Their focus is their people. Then he says, hey, I want you to go to that city and the gospel message is very clear. Heaven is at hand. I want you to give them the good news. I want you to tell them that Jesus is going to come back for them. I want you to tell them that I'm going to save them and that I'm going to come back for them. That's exciting. Then he says, I want you to go into each house and I want you to stay there. I want you to pray with them. I want you to bless them. If they, if they kind of turn their back on you, I want you to kind of dust your feet off and leave. Don't say another word. But I want you to go out and tell them that heaven is at hand. The four people that are going are myself, Randy, Lexi, and Dawson. We're going to take 1,200 gospel tracts for the missionary down there, so we're going to bless him down there. We're going to take a little bit of money, that way we can bless the place we're staying at. And then we're going to tell people the good news of Jesus Christ. We're going to tell people what he's done in my life, what he's done in Randy's life, what he's done in Lexi's life, what he's doing in Dawson's life. We're, going, we're even taking gospel tracts for the plane ride because of those divine appointments. If I get, to, if I get to sit next to somebody who's not, a, who's not a Christian, I want to have an opportunity to share Christ with them. 
but I'm nervous and I'm scared. And the disciples felt the same way, but you got to love buts in Scripture. They did it anyways. They had a heart for the nations. They started in Jerusalem. They went to Judea. They went to Samaria. And then even the remotest part of the earth. In Matthew 10, 16, it says this, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be shrewd as, as serpents and innocent as doves. That's awkward. Hey, guys, just so you know, it's going to be tough. People will want to kill you. People will want to throw you in jail. But I'm sending you out anyways. Good luck. You see, this trip started about a year ago, year and a half ago. And we've had high moments and we've had low moments. We've had, oh my moments, what are we going to do? How is this going to happen? When we first set the price, we were looking for about 10000 no, 9500 We raised just short of 11000 in less than six months. And I, even, I really wasn't even worried about the money. The, about the only thing I wasn't worried about. God has said, hey guys, I want you to go out to the nations. I want, to, I want you to share the good news. Know that it will be tough. Know that it will be difficult. Know that you will have hiccups along the way. Know that you will have difficulties along the way. Know that people will not like you along the way. Forty days out from the trip, and two of my members call and say, Ugh, I don't think we're going to go. That was my big hiccup and oh my moment. What are we going to do? Began to pray and began to see how God was orchestrating all of this and, and now we have a little bit of extra money to go down and bless some, some missionaries with and the people we're staying at with. And wouldn't you know, about six months ago their water heater went out. So we're going to go and see if we can help them with a water heater. A little church from Topeka, Kansas. Because we're willing to have a heart for the nations. Flip open your Bible to Matthew chapter 28. We all know this verse. We've, we've learned it. We've probably memorized it. Matthew 28, starting in verse 19 through 20. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. It doesn't say, hey, go make disciples of Topeka, Kansas. It doesn't even say, go make disciples of Kansas. It doesn't even say, go make disciples of the United States. It says, go make disciples of all the nations. All the nations. When we begin to have a heart for the nations, we begin to be called out. We begin to send people out. Maybe, maybe you're not a traveler and God's not called you to travel, but maybe God has called you to give. We're to be sent out to share the good news of Christ and to grow them up in Christ and to teach them all we know about God. That's the Great Commission. The issue now becomes the good news. And maybe some of us don't know what the good news is. We're going to move into a time of invitation. And the invitation is just this. If you don't know what that good news is, the good news is simply that Jesus came, died on the cross to save you from your sin. He saved me from my sins. He's preparing a place for me in heaven right now and for you in heaven right now. We just have to come to him. That's the good news. If you don't know what that good news is, I would encourage you to come down front 
when we move into the time of invitation and we can sit down and we can explain what that good news is, what the gospel of Christ says about salvation. The second invitation is this. And this is probably going to hit a lot of people hard. Do you have a heart for the nations? Or are we comfortable sitting in our pews? Are we comfortable driving home tonight to go, yeah, but Jeremy, God has really laid the United States on my heart. Is that where it stops? 4.5 billion people don't know who Jesus is. And again, most of them don't even live in the United States. Do you have a heart for the nations? I'm not saying that you have to jump on the next mission trip that we go on. I'm not saying that you have to sell everything and move to Timbuktu. But do you have a heart for the nations? Is God... Is God calling you to, to go on a mission trip? Is God calling you to give? Is God calling you to send gospel tracts? Is God calling you to send money? Is God calling you to pray for the missionaries? Do you have a heart for the nations? We're going to pray. And as God leads, I pray that you respond. Father God, we thank you for sending your son to die on a cross. I praise you because that we have hope in you, God. I pray that you would move in this place. I pray that you would touch people's hearts. I pray, God, that we wouldn't leave this place without doing business with you, God. I pray that if there's anyone here today that doesn't know you, God, that they would come forward and we would begin to talk and explain to them what salvation is and how they can come to know you, God. God, I pray that you would drive us, draw us, push us, to have a heart for the nations. God, if we don't, I pray that we would be broken of that. God, I pray that you would move in this place. In Jesus' name, amen.